Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Game and Zetacom video, we have the final Maxwell GTX 980 specifications for you. At least, as far as I know, they're final anyhow. So, there's actually quite a few surprises in these specifications. I've done it as an article as well, where there are some images to the card, as well as links to the relevant sources. But suffice to say, when I was reading over these specs, quite a lot of it makes sense, but there are definitely some quite... Oh... Didn't expect that moment as well. So, I guess we might as well start as we mean to go on by reading lots and lots of numbers. So, to begin with, the card is stuck on a 28NM process. No surprise there. The full part number is GM204400. The 400 denotes the fact that it is a full Maxwell. So that means, of course, you get 16 SMMs or streaming multiprocessor Maxwells. We already knew that anyway, but what we didn't know is that prior numbers and prior rumors had the card featuring 32 ROPs, which was disappointing to say the least. Um, however, the final card is said to have 64 rest operators. That's Quite a considerable boost over the GK110s, and honestly speaking, is more along the lines of what I expect for this type of card, particularly given the rumored price. Now, 128 TMUs will be featured, and you might say to yourself, well, that's very similar to Kepler. Well, yes it is, but the difference is we're seeing a higher clock speed. Um, so the fact that we're seeing the higher clock speed, which is running at 1216 in boost mode, and the base clock would be 1126, you can you can give you can you know you can kind of give them some leeway because that's going to be a much higher texture fill rate. Speaking of that, and impressive, it's 5.2 billion transistors. That's a hell of a lot of transistors, considering that once again we're talking about a 20 nm part. Now, it's quite interesting because we'd had a lot of theories regarding the reasons that NVIDIA were reducing the memory bus width. Uh, a lot of people, before the card had actually been officially announced, expected to see a 512 bit or 384 with like ridiculously fast memory. That didn't turn out to be the case, and for a long ass time, the only solid specification that constantly made through all the iterations of the rumors was the fact it was going to be 256-bit or with 4 gigs of RAM. So that's not changed, um, but the difference here is that the card does have 2 megabytes of level 2 cache. That's actually the same as the GK107, but NVIDIA are making up the gap by using what is known as third-generation Delta Color Compression Technology. So this is a bit like Tonga, AMD's Tonga, where they, of course, also lowered the bandwidth, but made up for it via lossless compression. It's basically just efficiency. It's unknown, to be totally blunt, whether it's going to make up for the golf completely. In other words, there may be situations where, yes, the full, a wider bus would have been beneficial. The best way we can really find this out, to be honest, is just get the card leave the core clock as is and start cranking the memory clocks up and it will be interesting to see just what happens in those situations do we see situations where the card definitely performs better with say a 10 percent overclock on the memory or does it not make too much of a difference and in many situations you need to crank the core up like for like we'll just have to see how that plays out so one of the new pieces of technology that NVIDIA are apparently going to be touting for this is known as Dynamic Super Resolution. What this basically says on the tin, or NVIDIA are stating anyway, is it's 4K quality on a 1080p display. It doesn't really tell you exactly what it does, but the early... But the early murmurings is it's going to be some type of upscaling technology which does a really, really good job. Still not going to be quite convinced on this. I'm going to have to see it myself and play around with it. But if it's as good or even half as good as what NVIDIA is saying, it's going to be definitely very cool, at least in my personal opinion. Although it's probably already mentioned and pretty obvious by now, the card will be featuring 224 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. 
but the TDP of the card is only 165 watts. That's, well, impressive, to be totally blunt. Now, I'm hearing different price points um, all the time, but it's pretty consistent that it's going to be around 500 to 600 US dollars, and the latter is most likely going to be more accurate, particularly at launch. Obviously, manufacturers and shops and so on can change this slightly. So, for example, at launch, you might get price gouging. This happens a lot. I, I don't know in the United States so much, but particularly if the card's in quite short order, particularly, I, I know it happens a hell of a lot in the UK, you could get at least 10 to 20% hiked on top of the price on initial launch, which then, of course, settles, depending, obviously, on other factors as well, such as memory costs at the time and so on. However, right now, 499 to 599 US dollars is the figures that I'm hearing a lot when it comes to pricing, which is quite odd, considering from what the rumors have it, the lower end card, the 970, is going to be substantially cheaper, up to about $200, supposedly, but the performance is not going to be that much lower. What I'm hearing is it's going to be about 10 to 15% lower than the 980, but you can overclock both cards quite considerably. That's once again rumors. Um, there have been some benchmarks that have been leaked, and another series that was actually uh, leaked even more recently, but just how true they are and so on, it's unknown. And to be honest with you, we're going to have to just wait because a lot of them right now are still 3D Mark, and I want to actually see it running crisis free and you know, real games to be totally and utterly blunt. In my personal opinion, from what from all the kind of piecing together the puzzles, it would appear that it's still going to be between the 780 and the 780 tie in performance, possibly tying with the 780 tie in certain situations. So the bottom line is, if you've got a 780 tie or equivalent, you're probably not going to be getting much of an upgrade in terms of raw performance. You might get situations where the cards trade blows, particularly in high resolution, um, and extra additional memory bandwidth is required or additional RAM, uh, sorry, not additional RAM or higher levels of anti-aliasing, so on and so forth. So it's it, it's going to be a situation where, do, you know, do the additional ROPs help? Um, does the additional memory bandwidth help, particularly for those who are playing on high resolution displays with um, particularly SLI? Um, but obviously, most of this right now is hearsay. But supposedly, these are the final specifications of the card. It's only a couple of days before launch, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's accurate. Most of this does tie into stuff that we'd already heard of anyway. So, I was pretty surprised when I'd only heard there were 32 ROPs on the bloody thing. Um, anyway, as I said, if you want to check out the article which is linked in the video's description below, you can also see things such as a die shot in other words, and kind of like the layout of the cards, which is pretty interesting actually, as well as the card itself. I don't want to put it in the video for obvious reasons regarding, you know, the fact that this is basically leaked, so I imagine NVIDIA wouldn't probably be too happy showing off uh, images of it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.